This is a brief introduction to the Keel Dynamic Graphical Language. For this, we will use the Keel Toolkit. I will start by creating a new project called Demo. Next, I will add my first output to the system. This is called a position in Keel terminology. The Keel Toolkit supports default naming. It has been set up so the default name for an output is Action followed by a number. So Action 1 is the name of the first output. It defaults to an importance level of 100. Now I have added a second position using the default name of Action 2 and set its importance value to 70. By moving the mouse over the icons above the two positions, I can review their importance values. Now I want to add some inputs to drive Action 1. I select Action 1 and click the Add Challenge menu item. We call inputs challenges in Keel terminology. Inputs can be supporting or objecting, which equates to driving or blocking inputs. Again, we are employing default naming. As soon as I add the input to the design, it appears on the source code canvas. I am now adding two more supporting inputs and three more objecting inputs using their default names. Note that I can manipulate the inputs as soon as they appear on the canvas. A Keel engine is being developed behind the scenes. It is the same engine that would be deployed in a product or software application. The blue bar in Action 1 shows the integration of the driving and blocking inputs to Action 1. Now I am adding inputs to Action 2. This time I am adding two supporting inputs and one blocking input. As before, the Keel engine has been extended to support this new logic. Now I'm going to add a new output called Action 3 and its associated inputs. This time one of the inputs will be defined as a bias. This is the same as a 100% supporting or driving input. When it appears on the canvas it will have a black arrow pointing up with a value set at 100. Unlike other inputs it cannot be manipulated. It is used to create inverse logic. The other input will be an objecting input. At this point, I have a system with three independent, standalone outputs. Each is completely independent of the others. Now I want to extend the design so Action 1 controls the importance of Action 2. I do this by dragging the connection point for the modified value of Action 1 to the connection point for the importance of Action 2. As soon as this connection is made, the logic is active. Note that the importance of Action 2 is the same height as the blue bar in Action 1. Next I want to extend the design so the resolution of Action 2 contributes to the resolution of Action 3. I do this by dragging the connection point for the modified value of Action 2 to the connection point for the blocking input to Action 3. Now I will add another output called Action 4 with similar inputs to Action 3. Next I want to demonstrate the functionality of a threshold. A threshold is used to create events or to turn on or off segments of a keel design or even external logic. I want to demonstrate two features. First, the ability to control the position of the threshold in Action 3 by Action 1, and second, to use a threshold to turn on and off the inverse logic of Action 4. I use drag and drop to create the desired logic. As soon as the wires are dropped on the canvas, the logic is active. All of the logic. As you can see, Action 4 turns on and off as the threshold of Action 3 is adjusted and as the modified value of Action 2 drives Action 3. 
This brief introduction to the Keel dynamic graphical language shows just four functional relationships that are created by linking source and sync connection points. There are other connection points and methods that allow us to create nonlinear models and to handle problems with time and space aspects. The Keel Toolkit also has a number of system engineering tools that assist in creating and documenting complex relationships. To get additional information on Keel technology, visit CompSim's website at www.compsim.com and look in the Papers and Demonstrations section.